Hey, hey, this is Sean with the Atlanta Tennis Podcast, powered by Go Tennis. Check out our calendar of Metro Atlanta tennis events at letsgotennis.com. And if you are interested in being part of the story, we want to hear your story on the Atlanta Tennis Podcast. So if you have a tennis story, something interesting, something funny, something crazy that you want to share, go to letsgotennis.com forward slash my story and share your story. It will enter you into our monthly giveaways, as well as the big year-end giveaway that we have coming up and will be announced soon. Today, we are with Dr. Patrick Cohn for Mental Training for Peak Performance. And today's question, we've touched on periodically, but we're going to dive in. Me personally, I'm going to talk about my own tennis team. I'm going to bring, I'm going to call some guys out and say, okay, is this the kind of competitor that is a candidate for mental training? Because I think that's a question on everybody's mind. What really makes me a candidate? What are we really talking about here? And in this case, the question is, what makes a competitor, and not just an athlete, because we're just talking somebody who wants to achieve better, what makes a competitor a candidate for mental training? So the general question, Doc, can you answer that? Well, and I have to preface this and say, you know, what type of competitor are we talking about? Sure. Right. We're talking about a weekend warrior or are we talking about someone that's actively, you know, playing USTA tournaments? So so it's a little bit different from that perspective. And that's kind of how we figure it out at peak performance sports here. So there's a couple of considerations. We do get the occasional athlete that says, I want to know what this is all about and how this can help my game. They're not slumping. They don't have a challenge, but they, they and this is an, an ideal client for us. I just want to get better. Tell me how I can get better with my game. So that's one way, which obviously in, includes a big population of competitive players, right? Sure. The other side of that is most of the time, 95% of the time, it's the athlete that tends to be struggling in their match play versus what they're capable of doing when they're just practicing and rallying, maybe even playing practice points in a practice setting. So most of our clients are, are of, of that mold where they're getting tight on the tennis court. They're getting frustrated on the tennis court. They're, um, they have fear of failure on the tennis court. They're so wrought with anxiety about disappointing their partner that they can't swing freely on the tennis court. There's many different signs, obviously, but it's, it's the ability to take your practice game or your strokes, your given strokes, to that competitive environment and still be able to play up close to your potential. So, so you have two different type of uh, scenarios that I offer about, you know, how mental training, who's mental training all about. And there's no stigma with this. Like I, I work working with another group that's going to help us with the mental health. And there's a lot of anonymity involved there. Like if, you, if you've got some struggles and you want to work on some things personally or professionally, whatever it is, there's, there's a stigma sometimes that we want to do those things. And we don't want anybody to know. But in this case, it's just part of the training. This isn't the kind of thing to say, oh, I'm, I'm going to get a mental coach for my golf game. And everybody goes, oh, yeah, okay. So you need, you need emotional <laughs> help. Or, or there's, there's no stigma involved here, right? Exactly. And I think we can do an entire show on debunking the stigma. Probably. But th that's absolutely correct. Anytime you have the word mental or you have the word psychology, like sports psychology in there, then it does, it, it scares a certain percentage of the population. But with the Olympics and with more and more athletes coming to the forefront, like Iga, for example, talking about her mental coach and, and traveling with her mental coach, People are understanding it's part of the training regimen today. Now, for the weekend warrior that just goes out and plays one match on the weekend, then, you know, it might not be appropriate. Our target population, obviously, is competitive junior players, collegiate players, uh, professionals that can really, really benefit from the mental coaching. So, um, once again, we're back to, you know, who's going to benefit from the most from this. But... How, how I explain it to players and athletes and, and parents is 
we teach mental skills to help you excel in your sport. It's not, we're not getting all Freudian on you. You don't light out on a couch, for example. We teach you good mental skills about how to focus, how to focus better, how to refocus when you get distracted. Those are mental skills that apply, uh, you know, not only to sport, but also to life as well. Um, so it's very simple, practical skills that we teach. It's not about working with problem players or mental case, mental head cases. All right, well, in that case, I, I do want to find out if it could be, because you say the weekend player, it may not be appropriate, but I'm wondering if it could be appropriate. Let's say I care enough, because I would guess a majority of your clientele, yes, is, is the junior trying to take the next step. Somebody like me that might just play on the weekends. Is there, is there a chance I'm investing in this? Maybe, maybe not. But in this case, we can also look at the juniors as, as examples of certain things that are maybe symptoms of a lack of mental training. And what I want to do here, if you don't mind, I want to go through the, the, the players on my tennis team. And I want to sure. say, okay, here, here's an example. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to call them all Matt because for anonymity's sake, right? They're all sure. just going to be named Matt. Well, all right, names. so there's one player, his name is Matt. And this has nothing to do with the fact that we have five Matts on our tennis team. So... Matt is upset with himself every time he loses a point and smashing his racket and struggles to get back to the line and prepare for the next point. Is he a candidate? He's absolutely a candidate if he wants to have more fun in the game. <laughs> Um, maybe he likes that. Maybe he likes taking it out on himself on the court, and that's his stick. But <laughs> that is you know, his his expression. <laughs> but that's definitely a candidate for the mental coaching if he wants to have more fun and have more composure out there, and that's going to help him play better as well. Certainly. Okay. So the next mat is I've got this other mat. He really looks for the excuse to give up. We can be we can up we can be up a set and a break, and if just something the right thing goes wrong, all of a sudden he checks out, and can find a way to just not care anymore and move on. Is he a candidate? Is this your tanker? <laughs> Is that what they're called? Tanking it? <laughs> yeah. So definitely we work with tankers. That's you know one of the things that we work on with, with tennis players. So yeah, when you're up in the match, how to keep that going. And also when you're down in the match, how to grind it out. So that's another candidate. But, but if, that, if Matt is not taking lessons and improving his physical game, then would Matt really commit to the mental training, right? So you gotta also consider that. That's another way of looking at it. Yeah, and in that case, it makes me wonder because we talk more and more on, in our conversations about the, the three parts of the tennis that there is or the the athlete that there is where there's the physical the mental the technical some would say there's five so you got all these different things that you do now when you've got the kids and they're they've got their periodization and they've got everything scheduled out you have all of these instructors and all these things you got to work on if you're just a tennis player which a lot of our audience is you're just a tennis player that likes to play on the weekends maybe you're better served because you say eh, you're not going to fix my forehand we're not necessarily working technically anymore. I'm 47 years old. I'm 53 years old. My backhand still looks like this. And it's always going to look like that. But the mental side actually could be a thing that I might invest in if I'm actually not putting that into the physical training. Would that, would that make sense? Again, is that the candidate that says, you know what, this could be the thing I invest in instead of changing technique or working on my fitness? Yeah, I think so. Um, or am I stretching it? Am I, am I really trying to get it there? Well, it's a, it's a little bit rare, but um, uh, the answer is we really want, you know, players that want to elevate their game and be able to perform the best that they can on the court, whether they play once or, you know, four times a week. That's the goal, you know, is to have more fun, be able to play closer to your potential when you're out there, uh, not letting the mind get in the way. And so if you're one of those players, yeah, absolutely. We do get contacted by 3.5, 4.0. We just got contacted by a player that says, I'm tense out there. 
and I'm tensing my golf and I'm tensing my tennis and um, I want to improve. Can you help me? And we, we would say, yes, definitely. And I look at that, that player that comes in that says, okay, I'm, I'm never going to be a professional tennis player. I'm not a developing junior. Right. But if I do want to put some energy and some resources and some work and some effort into my game, I'm wondering if some of those players might be more benefited by, and I think of some of your online products, not necessarily the, the more expensive one-on-one -on -one training, like some of the elite level players are going to go through. But if I'm going to invest in some of this getting myself better, maybe I'm not fixing my backhand. Maybe my fitness, I'm already going to my CrossFit or whatever it is I'm doing. I'm already doing my Pilates, as my wife would say. And in that case, am I, am I almost better served to say, hey, I'm going to grab some, some mental training. I'm going to see if I can keep myself from smashing my raggets or getting mad at my partner on my weekend matches. Yeah, we have all levels. You know, we have the Confident Athlete Series, which is a $79 investment uh, for each program. And then we also have the Tennis Confidence 2.0, which is less than the mental training. And people can start with that as well. And it's like a, a home study course for your mental game, which um, I think it's around 250 for the digital. Um, it's one of our premium products. But yeah, so absolutely, they can do it on their own. Uh, and get some programs, get some audio and workbook programs that would help them at least start the ball rolling and help identify some of the mental game challenges. Yeah, I like that. Get the ball rolling to use a sports metaphor, right? But in this case, it's looking at what's really going to help me. What am I really going to do? If I don't have time to practice more, maybe I do have time after work for a few minutes or on my phone. I'm not sure if I got to go through all, all the products and say, okay, how would I engage with this? And to say, hey, there, here are some tools. Here are some tips. Here are some ways I can improve. And maybe if I still think there's some stigma about it, I would bet if I decided to do some mental training, my friends would be laughing and on their case, on my case about it. But if I started winning, who cares, right? Winning's yes. winning. Well, proof is in the pudding, we say. And um, if you're doing better, you're consistently playing better. And 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 winning out there then yes then we we have all your teammates calling us right well and that's <laughs> what i'm thinking if i'm going to get a christmas gift for all my all my tennis friends and say is this the thing to say guys okay so we're all we're all good tennis players most of us played in college none of us are taking tennis lessons half of us are teaching tennis lessons that doesn't necessarily mean that we're not practicing but we're definitely not taking lessons and investing in our in our future selves as tennis players this really could be a good way to do it, whether you're a 3-0 or a 5-0 like some of us. Well, and talking about investing in yourselves, um, th there's a benefit to doing the, the mental training in tennis because it can apply to other areas in it's, your life. Uh, it can apply it, to it business scales. and yes. interviews, whatever it may be um, that you do. I, I work with traders, as we've talked about, and there, there's a direct correlation working with day traders I've worked with card players um, as well, dog handlers. I mean, I've worked with many different disciplines. And I know people in my field, they work with surgeons, which if you think about it, that's really where it needs to be applied. So there's a broad application beyond sports uh, with the mental skills. Okay, so that leads me to my last question, which is always, hey, can you give me something actionable? And I think I already have the answer. And it may not be what I, it, it isn't really what I expected in the beginning of the conversation, which is always fun. The question is, how can I know? How can I know if I'm the candidate? You as the, as the audience, you the listener, how do you know if you're a candidate for mental training? And from what I hear, everybody is. Everybody could be a candidate for this if you want to improve in whatever you're trying to do. Yes, pretty much. So, uh, although most of our clients are more on the competitive side, but we do work with the uh, recreational, you know, 3.5, 4.0 and up, and up players. W I have a, a short test that you could post somewhere uh, for your viewers and they could download that test and, and um, see for themselves. I love it. We'll add that into the show notes. We'll add that into the, uh, to the description and we'll make sure everybody can take that test. Dr. Cohen, this has been mental training for peak performance. And in my point of view, I think we're all candidates for some mental training because by the time I get to the towel, 
I want to be ready for the next point. Doc, thanks so much. We'll see you next week. All right. Thanks, Sean.